Hello and welcome! This time we're going to take a look at my Explosive Arrow Ballista Champion. If you're looking for a body friendly build, this is a great one to get started with. As of now, with this character, I only put around 5 exalts and I managed to get between 10 to 15 million Shaper DPS, which is really good with that low investment. I would like to mention that I used this as my league starter for the Arc Nemesis League and I had no problem getting to T16 maps with only a Tabula and a Quill Rain. The playstyle is very simple, you put down your Ballistas and they will kill everything for you while you run around and mind your own business. How the explosive arrow works is that you shoot an arrow who will stick on the enemy and after a duration or reaching 20 fuses which is the max, it will then explode doing a AOE, dealing damage and also applying a ignite. The faster attacks we get, the faster do the explosion happens, which means we get more DPS. We also do self-cast flame ability curse and also using the frenzy skill for some extra boost to our damage. But more about the skills later on. We're also using the key node Elemental Equilibrium and also Elemental Overload for some serious damage boost to this build. For me, I got to the point where I didn't really want to invest more into this build. I managed to unlock most of the maps and kill most of the bosses, so I'm really happy with where the build is at this stage. If you liked this video and found it helpful, don't forget to press that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel. It do help out a lot. Let's begin with some pros and cons with this build. Starting with the pros for this build, it's a very league start friendly one, good boss killer, no brainer playstyle, very tanky build, and also it can do all map mods, which is really good. And some cons for this build, it can be hard to get attack speed at first, also accuracy can be a bit of a problem. You do not have that much life regen, which can feel a bit weird. Also, damage over time is a big problem, so degen will be the number one enemy for you. Next, let's go over our skills. For the main link, we are using Explosive Arrow with Ballista Totem, Elemental Damage, Combustion, Ignite Proliferation and also Life Tap. For the Aura skills we have Determination, Grace, Precision and also Defiance Banner. And for the rest of the skills that we are using we have Dash with Steel Skin, Second Wind and also Life Tap. As well as Flame Ability Curse, Val Molten Shell, Frenzy and Life Tap. Moving on to the skill tree. And here I will show you how I went while I was leveling and also at the end how the tree looks right now. So let's start from the beginning. So this is what we went for for the start. For some damage here and some extra life. Grab this for some region and also to the right we go for the damage nodes over here. Next down here we have more damage over time multipliers. And for the next one we went down here, grab the life, gain the base life here and also down here to improve our ballistas. And later on we went up here, grab the life, and also the life here, and the life monster with the percentage. Moving all the way up here until we get to retribution. And for the next point we go all the way up here, grab some life, uh, ancestral bond for one additional totem, and I like to go for the total notes here for just some quality of life. Mm. 
and here is how the tree looks right now so let's start down here we respect from this one and also these we do not need the damage uh, we went over here grab the fortifications and also fortify mastery for 10% reduced damage over time we grab the fire nodes here with the fire mastery with exposure we grab the elemental equilibrium uh, elemental, equil uh, elemental equilibrium elemental equilibrium and went up here for finesse and we went with the elemental damage you could go over here if you want to for some more movement speed and spell suppression the choice is yours down here to grab the life and also this one to get some more region while we are moving we have aspect of the eagle on our amulet Moving up here, we have Mage Bane for some spell suppression and also reflexes here. And we went with Evasion Mastery, so we have a Mana Reservation for Grace. Up here, we went for Fire Node and also here another Fire Mastery for Multipliers. And up here we have the damage over time multiplier and another 10% less damage over time which helps out a bit. And also elemental overload. If you would like to know more uh, in depth about the leveling I recommend you go and see my other videos where I explain everything that you will need to know. Link is in the description. So let's go over some keystones explaining why we do have them uh, let's start with uh, elemental equilibrium so how this works that we need another source of elemental damage to get exposure to the one that we want so in this case it's fire so you, you can't have any flat added fire damage on your gear if you do so it will break and you will do less damage instead so for instance, my bow here, I have added lightning damage. You can have added lightning or cold on any item on your gear. So when the totem hit the enemy, they will get hit by lightning and therefore we will get exposure to fire and cold. The explosion and ignites comes after the hit and it doesn't count as a hit. Therefore this method works. You can easily see by looking on your skill if it have something added to lightning or cold damage and if you do then you're ready to go and moving on to mage pain as i said just providing us with more spell suppression for some more defense very nice nothing really more to say here uh, elemental overload is another one uh, when we crit we uh, gain a buff, dealing 40% more elemental damage, which is huge. Spiritual Command is another one that we are using. This one makes it so we, we get increased and reductions to minion attack speed, and it also affects you. So what this means is when we get increased minion attack speed, that also apply to us and our ballistas. And the faster your ballista reach 20 fuses, the more damage we get. And for this case, I will take my bow here, yet again as an example, because we do have an increased attack speed and cost speed craft on the bow, which do help out a lot. And if you would like to know how you can make one yourself, I will put a link to another video showing you easy step by step how you could do so. Link in the description. And lastly, just yes, Ancestral Bond. I know it kind of self-explained, but I'll include it anyway. And once we're here, let's go over our Ascendancies as well. For our Ascendancies, we first went with Unstoppable Hero. 
This makes it so when we have fortify, you cannot be stunned. Also giving us attack speed and armor and evasion, which is nice. Next, we gain fortitude. This makes it so we gain permanent fortify, which helps out with our defense and also providing all different kinds of buffs. And a quick note, this node here doesn't apply until you get this one because there isn't really a way to apply fortify if you are playing um, a ranged character. And for this case, while I was leveling up, I was doing a toxic rain. And uh, so yeah, just a quick note there so you, <laughs> so you do know about it. Our third is the conqueror. This makes it so all the attacks taunt. We gain 10% reduce reduction to damage if you taunt an enemy. And uh, the enemy you taunt deal less damage. Which is great for our defense. And for our last one, we get Worthy Foe. Enemy taunted by you take 20% increased damage. And also enemy taunted by you cannot evade attacks. So with this one it means that you do not need any accuracy pretty much. But I like to try and stay capped. Just because the first hit won't count if you do not have 100% hit chance. But yeah. For the bandits we want to kill them all for the extra skill points. And for our pantheons we are going with the soul of the brine king. And this one makes it so we cannot be frozen and we also gain reduction effect of shield. And we also went with the soul of Abrath uh, just for the less duration and also for the less duration of ignites and unaffected by burning ground. Alternative here you can go for soul of Shakari if you would like to but I prefer Abrath for my personal choice. And moving on to the gear, let's start by going over our uniques. First, we have got the comb's heart, providing us with a lot of life and also increasing our damage. Really nice choice. Also great to not have to worry about another six socket or a six link. Second is the Dian Dawn. This provides us with a huge damage increase because of the Ignite Steel damage faster and also providing us with life and resist, which is great. And for our third is the Ember Wake Ruby Ring. And this one makes it so that we can have one additional Ignite on the enemies, boosting our damage a lot. We do get less burning damage, but the extra ignite is just so strong. Uh, in total, this ring is almost one fourth of our damage. Really good for just a one chaos ring. And the second ring that we are using is the Polark Devastation. And uh, this ring is uh, a new unique that was introduced in the Arc Nemesis League. This ring, while we have it in our left ring slot, provides us with cover enemies in ash. Which do make it so enemies get slowed by 20% and also takes 20% increased fire damage. Really nice ring for both defense and offense. And just lastly, we are using uh, the rain of splinter. This makes it so we get a Bigger hit radius, making maps feels a lot better. Uh, the reduction to totem damage only affects like 4% of our damage, so it's just an awesome jewel to have for some more quality of life while we are mapping. For our bow, we are using a typical plus 3 bow with some increased attack speed, also some accuracy which helps out, and as well we got some added lightning damage so we can proc our EE. And uh, for the helm, just the rare one with some life and resist. Also having the helm enchant with increased attack speed for explosive arrow. Uh, 
and for our amulet, it's just a simple plus one to fire skills. And I managed to get with damage over time multiplier on it as well. Also alkylated the aspect of the eagle, providing us with a huge damage boost. And the alkylation is really cheap, which is awesome. It's just an amber, verfant and a verfant oil. So it's really, really great for the damage it provides. For the quiller, we are using a bread head for the increased attack speed. Uh, we got some life on it, just a couple of resist, and we got increased damage with bows and also elemental damage. And here you could go for some more attack speed or a damage over time multiplier as well. Uh, you could probably find a better one uh, for just a couple of chaos uh, than the one I'm using. And for the boots, I found these ones right before I was starting recording. It's very nice ones, providing spell suppression and some resist. Uh, movement speed as well with the onslaught and also a life craft. Uh, but before I just had a normal boost with movement speed, resist and life on them. Nothing crazy, but I include these ones anyway. Yes, for this showcase. And for the gloves, we have some life resist and some accuracy. And also we, we do have a plus two on AOE games. So here we are putting our auras. So they gain some more levels from that as well. Really nice. And just talking about the Uvel, so we do only have one except for the Splinter of Rain. And we do have this one, just get some life and as much attack speed as possible. And also went with some resist that I was lacking at the moment. You could go for some more damage over time or fire multi as well. And for the flasks, we are using a Keserite Divine for our life flask. And the reason I do not have an instant flask is just of the build's tankiness. Uh, it just felt better to gain that life recovery over time instead of having an instant flask. And for the next one I use a quartz for some more spell suppression and also facing. We have a granite for more armor. Uh, a quicksilver for movement speed. And also a Jade for additional evasion. And there we go. And before we wrap up this video, I would like to take a look onto the PUB. So first of all, going over the DPS. So what many people do when they are looking up the DPS uh, on the Ballistas, they put on 20 fuses uh, right away. And that is simply not correct. So an easy way that you can calculate this is, so here you have the attack rate, you shoot 2.6 per second and we have 5 totems. So in this case we are more likely to be on 15 fuses uh, than 20. Still we are rocking 10 million DPS which is really awesome on the investment of this build. Uh, some other things, we do have around 6k life and we also got 80% uh, evasion, 71 fish damage reduction and we also have 60% spell suppression with the flasks on. But yeah, so this gives us a 82k effective hit pull which is pretty nice I believe. So yeah, I'm really happy I decided to go with this as my league starter and I hope you will enjoy this build too if you try it out. Another thing is just because of the low investment, the potential of this build is really awesome if you would like to invest some more onto this build. Some examples are getting empowered level 4 for example and also a awakened elemental damage which provides plus 1 to the explosive arrow. Also getting 100 spell suppression shouldn't be an issue. We didn't have any on our helm or our gloves. 
Gaining a plus two amulet is also viable. And also, as I mentioned, the Quiller can get some more modifiers as well. There is a lot that you can do to improve even more. If you like this video, go ahead and press that like button and also consider subscribing to the channel for even more guides in the future. And with that said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!